This video is just reviewing germination. So germination is all to do with seeds and this is part of sexual reproduction in plants. It's part of the Leaving Cert Biology course and it's rapid revision. Germination is the regrowth of the embryo plant following a period of dormancy. Very important that you do state the regrowth of the embryo plant because it once was growing. It's just that the seed, which is the embryo plant in the food store, just went into dormancy. This period of reduced metabolic activity where there is no growth. So it's very important that you do understand as well that germination will begin when dormancy is broken and conditions are favourable. Three factors are essential for germination and if any one of these factors is missing, well then germination simply will not happen. The first factor is water. Water is an essential requirement. The seed is very dry because dormancy commences when the seed loses most of its water content and water is essential for metabolic reactions that like to take place in aqueous solution. So water will enter the seed through the micropile and this is called imbibition. So once some water enters the seed, the testa will swell and this allows for the rapid full rehydration of the seed because more water will enter. Also consider that cytoplasm is mostly water, so water is needed for cytoplasm. And once the cells are rehydrated, well, metabolism greatly speeds up in the seed. Water is essential for enzyme action in the seed also. Water is important for enzyme activation, so activating digestive enzymes in particular in the seed, which are going to break down insoluble food reserves such as starch into smaller, more soluble subunits that are easily transported to the embryo plant. Oxygen is the next essential requirement. It's needed for aerobic respiration. Remember, ATP, that chemical form of energy, is made in aerobic respiration and this is needed to fuel all those metabolic reactions that are now taking place in the seed. The final essential factor is a suitable temperature. The reason why a suitable temperature is needed is all to do with those enzyme reactions in the seed. Enzyme controlled reactions have an optimal temperature range. In plants, it's generally between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. So if you don't have the right temperature, the reactions will not happen fast enough. It's very important that you recognise that digestion is taking place in the seed. Remember, the seed has all of these food reserves that must be broken down and used by the embryo plant. So there's proteins, starches and lipids, and these are all going to be broken down by the action of enzymes. And eventually those smaller, more soluble subunits are going to be used by the embryo plant for energy and for building. In other words, to grow. Let's just look at this broad bean seed. There's two specific labels I just want to draw your attention to. There are other labels you must know, so revise the seed. But this top label is the epicotyl. It's the part of the embryo plant above the cotyledons and below the pumule. The hypocotyl is the part of the embryo below the cotyledons but above the radical. And that has not been asked and could be asked. Germination is the regrowth of the embryo plant following dormancy. There are two forms of germination, two types. There is hypogeal germination and epigeal germination. And we have to know a little bit about both. They both relate to the cotyledons. Hypogeal germination, the cotyledons stay below the ground. Think of H for hide, they high below the ground. So the radical grows down into the soil. After this, the epicotyl grows and this pulls the hooked plumule above the ground. The first leaves form and begin to photosynthesize, but the cotyledons stay below the ground. In epigeal germination, the cotyledons are raised above the ground. Think of E for emerge, they emerge above the ground. So the radical grows down into the soil and this time the hypocotyl starts to grow into a hook form. It grows and pulls the cotyledons above the ground. The cotyledons turn green and become photosynthetic. So the key feature of epigeal germination is the cotyledons are raised above the ground. It's better to go over this with some sort of diagram. So this is a very basic diagram of hypogeal germination. The first thing that always grows in germination, regardless of which type, is the radical. So the radical grows down into the soil. And in hypogeal germination, the epicotyl grows and it pulls the plumule up above the ground. And the most important factor is that the cotyledons stay below ground. They're hiding below ground. Broad beans specifically undergo hypogeal germination. So how does this compare to epigeal germination? Well, we know E means to emerge. So the cotyledons are going to emerge above ground in epigeal germination. The first thing that always happens, though, is that the radical grows downwards. In this type of germination, the hypocotyl grows into a hook and this continues to grow, pulling the cotyledons above ground. The cotyledons can turn green and photosynthesize. Tomato plants are examples of plants that undergo epigeal germination. 
So for germination, know the definition, the three factors why each of these are needed, talk about digestion in the seed and have an awareness of epigeal and hypogeal germination. Remember, there's lots of other videos on YouTube and there is a playlist on bugbears on sexual reproduction and flowering plants. You do have past papers with marking schemes and if you're still stuck, always ask your teacher. The very best of luck with all of that revision.